Today is the first. All right. So today we'll be talking about uh, we're going over the budget, and David has a few other things that we could talk about. Um, uh, it's on the agenda. Do you want to talk about? Um, we'll probably end up mentioning override. We'll probably be mentioning the um, uh, form of government. So those are some of the big topics today. So uh, David, what do you have for us? Uh, well, we have uh, we have a situation which is still under development. Uh, the departments are not uh, due to give me my, their budgets until tomorrow. Most have turned them in. I think there are four budgets that I haven't received, some of whom are working on their budgets, but uh, others I haven't heard back from. So I'll be working the reminders. Um, so the departments are turning in their budgets. They're due on, on the, uh, on the uh, first, second rather, at 4 p.m. Um, it's going to be very tight. Uh, I've been looking at the numbers in terms of revenues and the expenses, and the gap is shrinking. It's going to be a very tight uh, budget at the end, or at the end, recommended budget. We'll probably have recommendations which are not going to please everybody. Uh, but mm -hmm. I think that we are in a situation where we probably can bring things into balance, mm -hmm. not knowing some of these numbers. Mm -hmm. okay. Why? Why was there such a, um, a shortfall in the, um, you know, in what the state is going to bring us back for? Well, that might be worth our while to go through the cherry sheet and walk mm -hmm. through the components of that. The short answer is that we got <coughs> we got killed on our. Uh, charter school sending tuition and our school choice sending tuition. Those two combined. Uh, Does that mean a lot of students are going out of Hadley? Then, right, and the money follows them. Yeah. So we get assessed there. So let's walk through this just so that mm -hmm. we know what the, the deal is. Okay, so Governor Charlie Baker produced his budget, House 2. And from there, the Department of Revenue came up with a cherry sheet, a preliminary cherry sheet. And the first page there shows local aid estimates. This is the money that comes in. Mm -hmm. So we got a slight boost in Chapter 70, that's education. Mm -hmm. We lost a little bit in charter school tuition reimbursement. School choice receiving tuition is an offset, so we have to take that money out of there and not count that towards our revenues because that goes directly to the school committee for their use. So that money is not revenue money. That's the $554,000. Mm -hmm. <coughs> then the unrestricted general government aid or UGA uh, went up slightly. Veterans benefits went up by about five thousand, four or five thousand. State on land went up by about two grand. Uh, exemptions for re reimbursements for veterans and uh, uh, blind, disabled, and elderly on their tax bills went up about a thousand. And then public libraries saw a very modest increase in their off uh, their library aid money. So that's also money you cannot count towards your. Uh, revenue. Mm -hmm. It's set aside strictly for the use of the library. So that number, 2,420,000 and change, has to be offset by the 554 and the 6.9. 6 mm -hmm. right, that's your total revenue coming in. Mm -hmm. The Lord giveth, the Lord give, taketh away. So the next slide is what they're charging us. Okay, 
So if you cast your eye down, there's a couple of small charges for air uh, pollution districts, uh, RMV non-renewal surcharges, uh, the regional trans the uh, PVTA bus that goes up and down Route 9. Um, but then you see the school choice sending tuition shows a big increase of more than $50,000. And the charter school sending tuition shows a very large increase, almost $80,000. Uh, so this yeah. $1.2 million <coughs> has to be compared with the net revenue on the first page. And if you do all the math, we're $112,000 behind from FY18, the current fiscal year. I have questions. Sure. So FY19, which is the governor's proposal. The school choice, we're being charged this, and this <coughs> money right Excuse here me. that they're, we're seeing, that we pay the state. Yes. So when a kid goes to, like, it doesn't matter how many of our kids go to school, at this point, this is what we're being charged? Right. Okay. <coughs> so cause did we have to submit how many kids? Thank you. Yes, we have to report that every October. So this number is, is due, a lot of it's due to the report that we submitted mm -hmm. saying how many kids we're planning on going. Mm -hmm. Now what if all the, that's an estimate because she gets, they take out applications, but maybe they don't submit them. Well, these are based upon the October actual numbers. Oh, those are actual numbers. Yeah. yeah. Okay. There's a lag of a year or something like that, but uh, those are, those are, those are best estimates based upon a report that was generated six months ago. So there's a good chance, is, is it, is, is the, the difference maybe and why we're being charged so much is because this year maybe we didn't have as many kids where this year we had a ton of kids yes and if some of those kids are sped kids and they deserve an education like anybody else right. uh, they, they, they would get more they would get more. so she when she reports it when annie reports it she uh numbers to the state she would report that how many how many of them needed the extra the, right. the sped okay but, yeah. okay so these numbers, unfortunately, I, I thought demographically we were at the pinnacle of what these numbers could be, but they went up by a lot, by like a helium balloon. So I was caught by surprise by this this increase. Well, wouldn't, didn't we know a little bit about this increase by by the numbers that she s submitted for report? Did she have to? Did she submit something back to you telling you that? Right. to expect this increase? Because right. I would think but she those, would know that. Those demographic numbers didn't lead me to believe that we were going to see this kind of that increase. That is, it, okay. You know, so you count, you count heads. Yes. And you think this is what your costs are going to be. All right. Um, All right. Yeah. Where are the kids going, the ones that are, that are um, choosing out? Uh, I don't have that information, but we, there are lots of good, charter schools in the area, there's Four Rivers, the Chinese Immersion Program, Pioneer Valley Performing Arts, Hillside Collaborative. I mean, there are a number of good charter schools to cho uh, choose from. So. so that's the reason for my email is that this 99,000, mm -hmm. this represents only about half of what we should be getting in for uh, reimbursement for the cost of charter school sending. So if the legislature would fund the charter school reimbursement at the level that they're legally supposed to, that would bring in an extra $100,000. So. Almost wipe out the shortfall. Say that again? This so if, if the legislature actually fully funded this number, that number would be $200,000. It'd be a $100,000 increase there. Okay, so that's the charter school wishing reimbursement. reimbursement. They consistently underfund that, that account. Okay. They're See. legally required to fund it fully. And what we're saying is because... So how can they get away with it then? Because yeah. they're in the legislature. So they're they're giving us money back for kids going elsewhere. Yeah. Okay. 
that's the way it was. That was the deal that was originally struck when the charter schools were established in Massachusetts, is that the impact upon the communities would be offset by a reimbursement, but that reimbursement has never been fully funded. Okay. That well, goes to the because school budget because anyways. Of, hmm? That goes to the school budget. It does not. So the uh, school choice kids? Yes. The charter does not. That's correct. Okay. So this, if you're saying it's a reimbursement, this number, it for this number. Yes. It's not a fair reimbursement, but it's a reimbursement. Okay. Well, it, I mean, it's okay. It and this number right here, the school choice receiving. So we're not getting, according to here, that number went down. Yes. And the good chance that it went down is because we got less kids coming in. Right. So we have less kids coming in right now and we have more kids going out. You should, you should talk to Annie about that. Okay. Because she'll have a much better. Okay, so that's, uh, that's just what I'm thinking. Is where these numbers yeah. are coming from. Yeah. Okay. It's not straight <coughs> apples to apples okay. in those numbers. So right. she has a finer grain analysis than I. Okay. All right. So the select board, when they last met on January 17th, they uh, issued uh, detailed budget instructions to the departments. Um, unfortunately, the cameras were not rolling. So nobody heard those instructions, and uh, it was not recorded for later broadcasts. So the instructions were that the select board are looking for about $200,000 additional in the budget because we funded the four firefighter positions with free cash this fiscal year. They don't want to do that again this, this coming fiscal year. So they're looking for about $200,000 to come from the departments. They took out the education, they took out from the budget the fixed costs, the insurance, the benefits, the retirement, all that stuff. And they came up with a, an operating budget which, uh, over which they have some discretion of about four or five million dollars, and the numbers are, are there. Mm -hmm. um, they then apportioned a percentage of the $200,000 according to divisions, not departments, but divisions. And if you remember from your budget, we have budget figures of 100, which is the general government uh, um, budget. So town administrator is 122, plan, uh, town hall is 196, uh, town accountant is 131. So those are general government, and then they were apportioned a particular uh, uh, a chunk of the two hundred thousand dollars. Same with public safety, police, fire, dispatch, ambulance, mm -hmm. building inspector. Same with public works, sewer, highway, water, mm -hmm. uh, and they combined culture and recreation with human services, and, and had them uh, uh, apportioned part of the $200,000 to those divisions. They asked every division to come up with a plan. Your portion of the $200,000 is this. You can find that with cuts. You can find that with new revenue. You can find that in combination. So the select board, usually in a budget season, we have um, we have uh, departments putting together their budgets in a silo. Each, each department thinks about what they need, what their resources are, uh, put together a budget. This time the select board asked each division, consisting of many departments, to get together and think about how can we re enhance revenue, how can we improve operational efficiencies, where can we find um, the places where we can cut our budgets so that we're not, uh, so that we can get the town on a sustainable uh, path. Hey, Chief, how are you doing? How are you? So, they took school out of the picture? Hey! They took school out of the picture for right now. Okay. 
So I was this, just curious what your thoughts were. Related. So this has been an extraordinarily challenging um, uh, budget season for everybody. Uh, the departments did a very good job of rising above their departmental silos, I'll call them. I don't mean to make that sound a bad, like a bad word, but they started talking to each other as a division. All right, and they work together as a division, so they started seeing the larger picture. And they responded very well. The budgets that have been submitted, on particularly the big ones, have shown large decreases in, in expenses because they've been able to find places where they've been able to combine with other divisions and where they've been able to um, uh, cut costs based upon uh, what they really need. Uh, thinking about different ways of putting together their services. Again, with the focus on level services, we're not taking a step backwards, but what can we provide in, in terms of level services and meet these goals, which was made particularly challenging by the unwelcome news of a $112,000 shortfall there. So 200 turns into 300, and we're, uh, we're, we're struggling to make that uh, work. Um, budgets are due tomorrow. Uh, they're very tight at this point based upon what's, what's been asked for and what's been outstanding and how, the, how our revenues are shaping up. The due date for my budget for producing the book is next Wednesday the 7th, so no Super Bowl for me this weekend. Uh, mm -hmm. Do you watch it? I do. <laughs> they show it on the big screen up in the Greenfield Cinema. Oh, they do? Oh. For free, you get to see it in, in like giant size. They can. The warrant, that's the other part of this, the companion piece to the budget is the annual town meeting warrant. That's due on the 14th. Uh, and uh, there, there are a lot of, uh, there's a lot of to do in there. There's a lot of business including new ways of thinking about the town, new ways of conducting business. Mm -hmm. so, so that's kind of where we are at this point. So what is the select board saying about moving forward with the HR, the additional positions of funding, and requesting an override? They're not going there right now. That's not, that's not their thinking, that this is not the time to do that. Okay. Uh, but they, but I will d deliver a budget message which includes a statement about what do we still need to do in terms of finishing this budget. Okay, union contract negotiations need to occur. Uh, HR needs to happen. IT needs to happen. Finance director needs to happen. So didn't the fall we said that we were going to push it off to the spring so we could be more prepared to present it in the spring. So now we're saying that they want to put it off again. They, they're not going there right now. I know. So, because I thought our goal was to work forward, move forward with that. That's what was stated uh, two meetings ago. I look forward to your to this conversation on the seventh when you all meet. So, that's well, when. Is that a tribe seventh? It's not a tri board, but that's when I'm presenting my budget. I just assume you guys will oh, be oh, there. Oh, 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 gotcha. Okay. What time does that start? That's a Wednesday. Seven. Seven o'clock. Oh, okay. Wednesday. Wednesdays are not good for me. First and third. So I um, similar to uh, the uh, top, uh, form of government. I think how I'm thinking we need to present. You know, get some type of group together and present something. Mm -hmm. um, uh, so I'm, I'm thinking we need to get a committee together. I think we need to um, be spend some more time getting our numbers together and, and making it a working thing. Um, the, we're not getting the numbers, but we need to have some. Nobody's working on it. That's nobody. Why. That's that's the problem. So we need a working group. So somehow. You got to visit other towns that have gone through a charter change and they have a form of government. But that, that should, the right only way. people that are going to be able to implement that is your select board. 
Right, but you have to. Um, well, so we're going to put all the work and effort into doing it, and to, to, if they're not willing to move forward with it, why put the energy into working on it? Well, I think we'll have to get the do it to make the group. Would we get a committee? I mean, would we have to go through the select board to uh, form the committee? Uh, I don't see why you couldn't do it as a subset of the finance committee, or or ask the select board to appoint a committee. Again, if they're not willing, they are, and to me, they have to be the ones to say, okay, let's go ahead and move forward, and I thought that's what we were doing. Certain mm -hmm. people were working on certain things, and we were going to move forward with trying to come up with some numbers to make this happen. That's where we mm -hmm. did leave that, mm -hmm. and I think that's what Gabriel is thinking, the same thing that I am thinking. Um, so what changed? Well, I don't think anybody's has. I don't know what has exactly changed, but we haven't gotten any numbers together. Has the HR group met yet? That's just Jerry Devine and I, and your HCOG was working on HR, which the select board had talked about it a few times at the meetings, if I remember correctly, that they contacted you. Mm -hmm. Is that true? Yep. But then, then, then nothing moved forward after that. I submitted a letter of interest. Right. Yeah. Okay. And so, so where my, is that at? My thinking is we need to put something, like the finance committee could put, put forward, but we need to put it together. So we would have to say, well, we, this is where the benefit's going to, we have to list the documents of, of what the benefits are going to be, how are we going to save money, how much is it going to cost us, and then th th those are the reasons why we need it. And then same thing with the IT, and then we're going to say, well, we would like an override for... Um, but we need a dollar amount of what we're going to go for the override. And this override is going to co cost, the taxpayers are going to want to know how much is it going to cost. So, I mean, we can't just say we want an override without giving them numbers. So, again, we're re revisiting all this conversation that we had in the fall. This is circle, circling, circling mm -hmm. here. Mm -hmm. So, we either we're going to do it or we're not going to do it and the select board and i thought i sat in on the same meeting <laughs> that we together were going to be able to work together to make these things happen what happened well as far as so, i know so I, I remember clearly that the select board gave this task of form of government to the finance committee so i, I think if oh and they weren't working on it at all they're, they talked about it very briefly at their last meeting, but they, have not to, they, they are looking to you to come up with some sort of direction to go. Uh, that's what so they said? My recommendation is, is that you read some of the material that's available through the MMA uh, and that you visit some of the towns that, that uh, have forms of government that you think would be beneficial for the town of Hadley. Um, maybe talk to some of the local towns that have gone through a formal charter process, East Long Meadow, for example. So our, the letter that Gabriel presented to the select board basically mm -hmm. said, well, this is their budget and they're gonna figure it out when they come, come to us once we just present it, correct? And we are gonna work on those other things. So I think that the finance committee needs to work on those other things and figure out how we're going to proceed with that. If that's what they're saying to us, that we're not going to work in groups with the select board to move forward with these individual uh, needs of moving this government forward. So I kind of sense from the select board again that they're not for government change. And so when we, as the finance committee, go out there and look and um, look at the different types of governments and how different towns of this size um, function that well you don't come back and and you know just because we somehow managed to balance a budget without free cash or you know using that and to make it through 2019 then again it's pushed off pushed off and pushed off so you know, again, so, so I'm thinking we're circling here, and so I think the finance committee 
um, the meeting that you missed, which was fine, I don't know if you watched it afterwards, we all agreed that we were going to move forward with uh, coming up. Uh, David gives a great idea to um, coming up with numbers and so forth uh -huh. as far as presenting these things, which is fine. So our focus needs to be on that, and then the budget is not our focus until the select board says, here it is. Is that correct? Well, I wasn't here for part of that, so I'm not sure. Well, I'm stating, I'm thinking that's what the letter basically said with, that Gabriel presented, that we all read, right? That <coughs> the budget well, was a select that, board. That hasn't been, um, I don't believe that the, um, it was discussed at the select board meeting. He read the letter. They all received they, the letter, but I don't think that they commented on the letter because the fact is they just received it that night. Yeah, he and, and is, he was here. He had so. sent it by email just a couple of minutes before our meeting started. Okay, I and understand sometimes life catches up with you. Oh, and absolutely. You get done when you get I'm time. just trying to save our talking in circles consistently here, and that's that's wasting you know, a valuable time as far as I'm concerned when we could be working on what we're supposed to be working. So if the select board threw that in our plate and said, we want you to figure out the numbers, so I was a little uncertain of that. I thought we were working together on certain things, but that's fine. If that's what the goal is for us to do, that's what we need to focus on, correct? <coughs> and Bill Keegan said, take your time, take a year work on the form of government. Well, I've seen this him a few times since I've been on the finance committee, so it's been over a year. But I kind of feel like you need to have the select board support. You know, having us do this and not having them support us is like, why bother? Because we can go to town meeting again and say, here's what we've done, and, and we're not joined together. That's why I thought we were doing this together. So I'm confused. Well, I think, it's, let's talk about the form of government. I think that maybe we could have a group, and it could, and it's just an informal group, maybe we could get some, you know, other citizens that want to help out, similar to our ambulance group. I mean, that's been going really well. We've had guest speakers come in, but, you know, as far as just being the few of us, I think that we could use some more help with this. I don't think that, I think we could get some input. I think we could have some guest speakers come in, like from the other towns. Um, I think that um, we could we could just focus on just that, maybe have, um, and spend some time, and not think about anything else, but have a, a, a side group, and then once, we're all ready with this, you know, have a good presentation, then we can present it. I think that we need to get the blessing before we do the work that the select board would, you know, realize what we're doing and, and give it a blessing before we do work. I totally agree. I don't want to do a bunch of work and not have the select board. Well, I guess help I'm confused because I was at the select board meeting that we were going to work together to accomplish this. And now they're back burner, they're putting that on the back burner and where we, I thought, were hot and pursuing it, so. Well, I don't think that it's, that you, we've done enough work on it. I don't think that we have. Um, I agree, so when, what is our goal? So, I thought so that we who, made our goals. So who, who would you like to have on the committee? I mean, the, the, I mean, you're gonna be up to your eyeballs and budget figures in the next couple of weeks anyways, so who do you wanna have on your committee that has the time? in the background to look at organizational structures. Um, <clears throat> maybe visit a couple of the area towns and look at uh, how things are done, get a couple of charters from from small towns that are Hadley sized. Um, I'm happy to assist, but I, you know. The, Your this, time is limited as well. Yeah, but this, you know, this project is going to go ahead without me at the, the, the other end of it, so right. I'm not going to be the town manager, so I just want everybody to be... <coughs> See, I I, you've be, said I that several times to me, but I don't understand why you feel like you couldn't be I I still a key part in town of Hadley. I don't well, understand that. I could retire that. at some point, you know. Well, yeah, that's your plan, happened. but we're not like <laughs> changing our government is not to push you away as well. I know, I know, but I, you don't want people to think that I'm just trying to grab all the power either, so. Well, well nobody's I, saying that. Yeah. Oh, yes, they are. Okay, well, we're not saying that. Okay. We're not. No. All right. I, 
me personally are trying to better the government in this town and make it a better working place also for the employees here. That's I'm trying the goal. To, it's not for you to feel like, yeah. and you shouldn't feel that way. It's very common that whenever there is a change of form of government, that the incumbent has to reapply for the position and has to compete in a whole field of the other well-qualified people who may be able to serve the good of the order better than the incumbent. But yeah. I also remember that the gentleman that came here, there's not a lot of town managers out there or people applying for these positions. Or qualified or know the Or qualify. I mean, or know so the numbers like some people. <laughs> 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 yeah, I mean that's a real tr that's a real uh, problem with the uh, profession is that they're graying out. Mm -hmm. We had twenty five percent of the, I think these numbers are accurate. I could be wrong. Uh, twenty five percent of the uh, the managers retired in the last five years. In the next five years, we're going to see another twenty five percent. The way so f so developing a cadre of of uh, qualified and seasoned managers is high priority for the MMA and they're actively working on that. Mm -hmm. so. I feel that we all have full-time jobs. This is part-time. Same for the select board. They all have full-time jobs and it's part-time for them. The efficiency with part-time people who want to give 100%, it's just not efficient. It's just not, they're reactive, they're not proactive, and we need to be proactive. And as far as I'm concerned, so I guess I'm gonna go to the next select board meeting again and say, what is it that you want to see happen? What is it that you want us to do? Because I'm under the understanding, and I'm, this is the last I'll say of it, is that at our two meetings ago, we and by based on the letter that Gabriel wrote and the select board has not responded to that our goal was to move forward to find out what it's going to take to fund the things to make this building and the the employees within this building I mean up to where it should be as far as HR IT and blah 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 and not worry about the budget because it's their budget well, my understanding is, yes, that we were going to take on the role of presenting or push, you know, getting the facts together for a override. My understanding is that we would be the ones to, to take the reins on the form of government. That's not to say that we're not supposed to be reviewing the budget. I don't, I didn't agree to that part. Oh, I um, didn't say we weren't going to review it. The budget, yes, as far as the cuts go, saying you need to, um, to cut this line item or that line item or to put those things in the, in place of who's not getting the money. That is what we said is not let the select board decide, okay, this department, we're going to cut you by this much. Yes, I agree with that. That's fine. But we still should, we need to, this is a big part of the budget, of what we do. And I, and I get that. Yeah. So, but when the budget comes to us, it should be balanced based on what the select board says. It shouldn't be thrown in front of us like last time and say balance and then we don't agree. Well, we need to keep an eye on it and, and constantly bring up stuff like in asking questions. Like, and, re and, and, and this should be part of every single, you know, on our plate all the time, I think. And if we know it, then we should be look, constantly looking at it and, 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 and addressing different things. Like one of the things I would address right away, you know, down the road is the ambulance. I know that we're gonna have to increase that number. Um, things like that, I think we need to mention. It. Um, but I think the budget, I, Yes, maybe we're not going to go to each line item and say this this one needs to cut him, but and, and we can take on some other roles of, of the override and we can take some out the form of government, but um, yeah, I don't think that this is you know, off our plate. So I recommend, particularly since you're a volunteer board and particularly since we've taken a new approach to the budget of looking at it from a divisional standpoint rather than a departmental mm -hmm. standpoint and say you meet with divisions rather than departments 
that'll cut down your your uh, the, the number of meetings that you have to do by at least a half. Mm. Uh, and you'll be able to see the cross division departmental interactions where people are talking about shared services and strategies and fee increases and things like that. Since Mike is here, I'll just say that uh, one of the things that Mike has done is been able to consolidate the administrative uh, assistant position within uh, your d division so that you've taken two one and a half uh, full-time equivalents and made them into one equivalent, full-time equivalent, that just does admin. That, that's the budget that you presented. So that kind of communication had to happen between police, fire, dispatch in order for that efficiency to arise. So when evaluating these budgets, do it on a divisional basis rather than, uh, than a departmental basis. I think that's a good idea. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It was difficult though because you know we were looking to try and try to come up with a you know a pretty sizable amount of money to put back or revenue. <coughs> right. So you know in order to try and offset the costs of some of the full-time firefighters it, it made sense at this point to try and do that. Mm -hmm. so. Yeah. So I think these um, like the two the two main tasks that we're looking at the, 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 the four of us, you know, in this group, it's too much for us to, to do all that research. I, I mean, I can't, we, I don't feel like we could, the, the four of us can present something and have all that information right now by these, by meeting twice a month. Um, I think we, you know, I, let me know what you think, but I mean, can you present, can we, fully feel like we can present an override right now. We can just say, yes, it'll increase. It, it, we, don't, we, we don't have any numbers. We don't have anything to really present. Um, it, it's a lot of work. Yeah, I, mean, I, I, I think without knowing what the budget looks like. Yeah. Um, and we'll know on Wednesday what it looks like. Uh, I think we just have to wait until we find out how big the issue is that you need to address. Sure, I, I agree, but we need to... Um in the meantime, would it make some sense to um, call the folks in Longmeadow, for instance, and have them come to a, a, a finance committee meeting and, and talk to us about um, their charter, you know, the, the changes that they made? Would you like me to do that? Yeah, East Longmeadow. East Longmeadow, okay. Yeah. Do you know the person there? That I, can I don't. I've never met her. Okay. Uh, she apparently is very sharp, very capable, uh, but I don't know her. Okay. What is her title? She's town manager. Okay. I can call and ask. You know, if you can, if you want to come share mm -hmm. what she's learned in the yeah. process, so we don't read it at the whole wheel. Mm-hmm. Do you think that she'd be willing to do that? I mean, is that something? That, like, would you do that if somebody? Asked you? Sure, I've okay. done it before. Okay. Uh, I've been to been to a number of towns in the area to talk about either finances, capital planning, or town administrative forms of government. So it's part of the service that we provide. Okay. And um, did, would we offer to compensate her at all, or is there something she does? Um. I think I'm sure she'd be. Thrilled yeah, to I've come and speak. You know, I've never, never accepted money for this kind okay. of work. So it's not something I should do. I shouldn't offer her okay. Nice, okay. nice little gift basket with some crackers and cheese. That, that works. <laughs> <laughs> Is that what you would like to see? Asparagus. Asparagus. Okay, I can do that. And uh, so, um, would 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 it make sense to invite her to come to our next meeting? I think. Not necessarily, because I think we need to make sure, you know, we have a plan before we start inviting people, only because we've invited those other gentlemen, mm -hmm. and we're, and we've heard a lot, right? But we want to make sure, they already made a good point, you know, are we going to invite more people, and we're going to be in the same boat? I do want to make sure that they are on board with us doing this. And you feel like that would be, do you, do you think, that I, I should we say something at the next meeting to make sure that they're on board, or do you think that they just are on board? 
the select board is. Well, I'm, uh, I heard what they said, which is the uh, finance committee, if this is your ball, you run okay. with it. We also have an election coming up. Yeah, I would, you know, one of those things is I, I think that we're not going to get this done before the election. I mean, as far as changing and everything, no. it's going to take a while. So I would think that we want to make sure that the board that's going to be working with us is mm -hmm. <laughs> on the same page. Well, from what I'm hearing, it sounds like they are behind it. It sounds like they just said, can you please do this? Right? I mean, yeah, it, it, why do you think that they're not yeah. uh, that they're not for it? Uh, just listening to them and never committing. They have not committed to it. So, and uh, if they were committed to the override, like supposedly we were all going to work on, we were supposed to be starting it before the fall, all town meeting to get ready for the spring push it off to the spring so we have more of this but it just keeps they keep pushing it off they do so right. that's why i don't feel that their board is supportive not all of them i should say not all of them and i think because you know they have donald left and you know we're so short a select board person to begin with and but there are two issues. One is about the override, and one is about the change of government. Right? Right. So do you think that they are for one and not another, or do you think they're not really for both? Or? I don't think. Um, I, th My personal opinion that there are a few members on that select board that are not for the change of government. Yeah. And there are also a few there that are, sure, you can research it, but if they're not going to vote it in as far as um, creating other positions, even though it was recommended to us in that uh, um, and a management report. Yes. Yep. To have these things done, they've never moved on it. So it's basically been told to them, this is what the suggestion is, and they have never done any okay. So. Uh, my also my other feeling why I don't feel that they're supportive is because of the last thing that happened with us at the budget. Yeah. Well, I don't think anybody wants to repeat those that experience again. Well, I don't want so to repeat that either. We have a guest here. I don't know if you have a particular item of business. No, I just. Just want to. You, you want to help us. Well, it's a big it's a big year for the department. I want to make sure you have all the facts, and I don't know if you're at that point yet, but I just. In case you had yeah, you had emailed me and well, I thought maybe it was something it was late when I got it. And yeah, I just so sent it out late. To just right. ask for a little clarification of, of the positions. And it's hard to ask him to look at his budget and say, "Well, I can get back when we're trying to buy money to cover things." <laughs> <laughs> it's great that you were able to work with the police department with that to, oh, yeah. to increase efficiency. We'll see how we're, I, don't, I don't have a foundation to tell you yet. We haven't, we've never done this. Mm -hmm. So, you and know. Plus, they're in the same building, so it's easier to work together mm -hmm. versus departments that are not in the same building or different schedules or. It's changed a little bit, too. Like, when the office person started, it was 15 hours a week. Mm -hmm. That's it. That's, that's always been 15 hours a week. And honestly, it's so hard to get stuff done when you're in three days one day, two days another. You know, it's because mm -hmm. you're not getting a, somebody up. They have to have another job. Mm -hmm. So, um, so it just made sense that we're bringing on for you know firefighters start building out the responsibility. And then uh, I spoke with Mike, and you know, his office person is has a little additional room in her in her day. So right. it seemed to work out. But I mean, again, I'm, there's a lot of statistics I'll be able to have for you next year. So I'm, we're shooting on the hip. <laughs> I also have a question or suggestion is with the senior program that they're offering, is there any seniors that would be willing to help out as far as administrative things? You know? I know Potentially. I know working in Northampton we had this lovely lady come in so many hours a week. She actually volunteered at the fire department for the longest time. And it was it was the small things that you just never get time to do that she was able to do and she enjoyed it mm -hmm. 
and uh, we enjoy having her. Actually, she's, she'll be back again this year, so. Potentially, yes. It's just, we got to build out the organization of what's coming in first, and then we might be able to, you know, take a step back, because we're trying to get everything on, you know, computerized, and these systems that we have in place now, and really start getting stuff on board there. So we've been working hard on trying to file stuff and get stuff put away where it needs to be. But potentially, and maybe even on the police side, you know, the police have a lot of old records and stuff like that, so potentially. So the only question I would have for you is, is if when the town sells North Avenue Hall and that takes away your space for your, your equipment, what's going to happen? It's the same. Uh, it's the same story that I've that I've stated the entire time. We, we don't have a place for any of that equipment. And if you had to pay to keep it somewhere, what would be the rough cost of that? Well, when we did the when we did the rough cost, it was for you know it was for a commercial space that was built out, mm -hmm. and it was it was pretty extensive. It was I want to say over thirty seven thousand a year or something like that. It was pretty it was pretty pricey mm -hmm. when we originally did it. But I mean, we've had some folks offering up their, you know, their barn or whatever. But but that's not. It's still, you know, but we have we're working on some other ideas on that, that as well. But it's really not. Yeah, we are looking at some alternatives for that, but it's just it's going to take some time to do it. Did we put the money in to make it so that way? It, were we putting like five thousand or something into that place for a temporary? We decided to, because we had purchased the land and was changing the location of okay. where the station could be, um, we didn't do that. So we've, we've kept the same pumper up there, which is fine right now, okay. until we figure out exactly what we're doing. Okay. Um, so where's the money sitting, just sitting there waiting to decide what to do with it? I, it wasn't, I don't think it was appropriated into my budget. Um, I think it was, it was available if needed. So, but we actually it was we did, had discussed it discussed it with the select board, and we had, were holding off on it because we we're actually in design for the station. But then the issue came up with the the lot, and it hasn't been readdressed. But we're operating fine with the way it is right now. So the warrant article that I'll be producing in uh, two yeah. weeks so will have the general. additional funding for the fire substation and the project can start moving forward again. So the five thousand that was set aside to revamp temporarily the North Hadley Village will come back. That five thousand dollars is in an article for rehab of the uh, North Hadley Village Hall, so it's sitting right there until we need it. Mm -hmm. Like he's saying, we're not going to right now. Not at this point. No. We're not yeah, going to need it. We're just sitting on it for right now. Because if to yeah. return it to the general fund, we'll do that. Because those that would be like one item that comes up at the end of the year. Oh, now we have five thousand more free cash, right? Is that how it works? Uh, it depends on where that original five thousand came from, and I can't remember just off the top of my head. But you have to return it to the original right. bucket that you took it out of, whether that was capital stabilization, free cash, or a general fund. I, I don't know, but it, by law, it has to go back to its original source. Right. Okay. So I guess then the next thing is that we would be here on the seventh when you I'm give us our lovely present, paper. A, <laughs> I'm either presenting a budget or I'm telling people I need more time. Oh, okay. Yeah. okay. But I think I can I can do it. I just down to a few departments left to go. So maybe we should be posted for Wednesday night then. I would have argued. Okay. So you had a question about, I'm just jumping around. Yes. Yeah, uh, keep going. Uh, you had a question about the enterprise funds. Oh, yeah. Uh, you met, um, mm -hmm. and I uh, didn't get a chance to uh, see what happened, what was the outcome on that. So the enterprise funds are, by policy, are supposed to be supported entirely by sewer revenue for the sewer fund, water revenue for the water fund, mm -hmm. and cable franchise fee payments uh, for the cable TV's uh, enterprise fund. Taxpayer money is not supposed to be used to support any enterprise fund. Um, so in order to avoid hidden costs being borne by the taxpayers, we look at our 
salaries for non-revenue uh, enterprise fund people. So my time, Linda's time, the treasurer, the town collector, the assessor, the accountant, uh, all the people who are involved in handling the money and administering the, uh, the enterprise funds. What are their salaries and what are their benefits and what portion of those should be attributed to each of the uh, enterprise funds? We also look at the expenses, so legal expense, insurance expenses, other expenses that uh, are part and parcel of maintaining a building where you can house a town accountant and assessor and a collector, etc. All of those costs are apportioned a percentage to each of the enterprise funds. So those are your indirect costs that the enterprise fund should be paying for. And then there are the direct costs for the enterprise funds, the benefits that each worker earns, but is paid through generally through the general fund. So all of those costs are, are uh, accounted for and attributed to each of the enterprise funds. And then finally, the OPEB obligation, how much of our annual OPEB contribution to the trust how much of that should come from water, sewer, and, and Hadley Media. Mm -hmm. And you put all those together and you come up with these numbers. $205,000 for water, $200,000 for sewer, and about 14000 for Hadley Media. Mm -hmm. Those enterprise funds need to reimburse the general fund for uh, those ex hidden expenses to the taxpayer. So we went through the formulas this morning in detail, trying to determine what does each formula mean? Is it fair? Does it, is it something that we can rationalize or defend if somebody challenges us? And come, we came up with final figures at the, uh, at the end. Mm -hmm. And we feel confident that we have a formula which makes sense. That's good. That sounds good. Okay. So what, what kind of figure is that? Like your the the, um, the amount of your time and your benefits and Linda's time and benefits and whatnot. What how much of that is devoted to you know it is charged to the enterprise fund? I'm just curious. Okay, question. so my salary plus benefits. Um, I think it's about a three percent of my time is supposed to be. Uh, devoted to sewer, about four percent of my time devoted for to water, which it's not. It's a lot more than that. But the formula tells us how much we're going to apportion my time and and um, the hourly rate for my time to each of the enterprise funds. So is this formula different from how you did the previous budget? Not substantially. So has the um, amount, so lot, I, mean, I know you've been doing this. Mm -hmm. Has it increased quite a bit? It's actually? decreased. Oh. It was yet another challenge for putting this budget together oh. is that we lost revenue in the enterprise fund chargebacks with the exception of Hadley Media, which increased from about $8,000 to $14,000. That's the only increase. Why did the other two decrease? Uh, partly because we We've gone through some of the capital projects. We've been knocking those off so that uh, the amount that we can apportion to each of the ca uh, enterprise funds has uh, been decreasing over time. So okay. as as we're more successful in accomplishing these capital projects, there's less money on the table to uh, apportion to the uh, taxpayers as a reimbursement. So that works the same with like Marlowe's, just say for him example, because he's part of his salary and his benefits must come from that as well, correct? The, but that's taken care of in the budget. If you look at the budget. Right, third it's is broken up. Yeah, it's broken up a third, third, third for water, sewer, and, and highways. So that's already taken care of. We don't have to plug that into the formula. Okay. Now, if they are, if they don't, does he still need to spend as much time on the water and sewer? Now that you've got the, what is the SCADA and some of the other things, maybe he's not spending as much time there. 
Yeah, we just had our kickoff meeting for the SCADA project yesterday. So that uh, that project is actually just beginning, so he's spending mm -hmm. as much time on that as, oh, okay. as uh, before. So 40, our, oh right, okay, so we gave $10,000 back from our reserve fund, but it's in the budget for this year for 50000 That's correct. Okay. Dustin, I cut it. So, so when you ask every department to level fund or give back, that's not including raises. That's right. That's not going to be worked out until we have uh, settled the union contract. So there, that might increase our shortfall. Uh, I've got a a little sum of money set aside in order to cover all of that, so I'm hoping that will come out even. And do you also have money to set aside for the non-union? Yes. People? Yeah. Okay, cool. Excellent. Whether it's enough, I don't know, but we'll go through the whole process. Well, sounds better than uh, the start with. Yeah. Great. <laughs> right. You know, you know, from talking to other town managers, if other towns are also um, feeling impacted by um, the state funding being less than what is it's supposed to be? I haven't got a good sense of that right now. Uh, I have talked to some of my fellow administrators about, okay, I really got hit hard on shorter choices here. How about you? And I haven't heard that that's, that's a shared problem. Uh, but charter and choice is a major problem for towns across the Commonwealth in general. You know, whether it's the particular House 2 budget that's hurting them or just the inequality that's built into the reimbursement formula, uh, I can't say. Um, is it likely that um that about Slyback is going to be able to do anything about it? Because it sounds like it's not just us. Uh, it, yeah, so I think I think that this needs to be a priority, of a funding priority at the state level. Uh, we're aided by the fact that everybody is up for re-election this year. So this is now the time to get on the telephone and write letters and emails saying we need to we need this legislature to meet its legal commitment to fully fund the charter tuition reimbursement account. I don't know that about. Does the finance committee ever spend that two fifty in expenses? Yes. Um, and in fact you should. Uh, those expenses are there for you to attend the Massachusetts Association of Finance Committees annual meeting which happens in the fall. And oh, so, right. I remember an email on that. Yeah, so you should be going to that. It's on mm -hmm. a Saturday. And it's a great opportunity for you to meet your fellow finance committee members from mm -hmm. across the Commonwealth. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and when is it? In the fall, September or October sometime. Okay. Okay. We had one last year, right? Yeah. And I didn't think I could get that. Yeah. yeah, I would like to go. Well, that's the money for you. To go. Has there or well, anybody else has taken papers out for this position? This is off kilter for select board. I don't. I don't know who's taken out papers. Oh okay. I just yeah. only know one person running, so I was just curious if there's other people that have stepped yeah, up. Yeah, I tend not to get involved. I don't think Hadley people want me to be. Uh, I just thought maybe involved. you might know. Because you're on the same floor, <laughs> your office is on the same floor as the office where people come yeah. in. Yeah, I don't get involved. We I'm also sorry. need to find another finance committee person. Yes, and so we've been uh, we've been working the phones on that one. Uh, I thought I had a good candidate for you, and she decided not. Mm -hmm. uh, so have you talked to Brian? Yes, I have. Okay. Is he running as moderator again? You don't know that. I don't know that. 
Because mm -hmm. it does make it difficult when, <coughs> you know, for a quorum sometimes we need that fifth person. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to ask my accountant. He lives here. Oh, yeah? Mm -hmm. Thanks. Probably a good idea. Yeah. He'd be fantastic. I think he's a busy guy, though. Yeah. But he'd be fantastic. Everybody. <coughs> Everybody's busy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I don't, I don't have Do you need to have anything else? <laughs> no, but thank you for stopping by. No, 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 but I'm going to um, ask you later about uh, soccer. It's coming up quick, isn't it? Yeah, well, okay. this is for a different week. Sure. I'm just going to call it. Okay. okay. <laughs> thank you. Bye. <coughs> Everybody's coughing. Hurry. <coughs> like, end early. Yeah, I'm okay with that. I don't have anything. I think we just will post for Wednesday mm -hmm. and then we'll regroup for our the third Thursday of the month. You're still with that? So are we changing our time now to six? Six is so much better for me. Okay. Is it? I, I'm okay with it. I, I So I figured I put it in for six only because I thought that that's what everyone seemed to like. Is that okay with you, Chair? I have no problem. I just we're going to consistently stay with that. Okay. I didn't know if we just went we went to six for like a few meetings and then. Well, we went to six for the um, just for um, one meeting. It seemed to be everyone liked it, so I put it in again. One time it was six thirty. It was sometimes I work until six. Oh yeah, yeah. And it's not that it's not a big deal, but uh, you know, just getting down night, I get out at six. And right. Sometimes I might not get here six. My only request is for the select board, though, is that when they have the tri board meetings, because I would like to attend those, that they're not on the first. Their schedule is the first and the third Wednesday. Yeah, so let's, let's bring that up as an item of discussion. Yeah, right. It's, not it's just a conflict with my schedule at Northampton, yeah. and I like to be a part of those meetings. I don't know if they're willing to meet any more than just those Wednesdays for that, but. Yeah, so they've, they've set out their meeting schedule from now until town meeting. Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, we can quickly take a look at those and decide which ones would be good for tri boards. And I like to, the last tri board, it's not recorded, correct? They don't right. typically record well, the tri board they're meetings? Suppo they're supposed to, okay. it just didn't happen. It was just for that one time. <coughs> oh, okay. Because yeah. then I like to watch them. Sure. So it gets me up to speed if I can't attend them. Yeah. It was a drop ball that happens from time to time. No, I have no problem with that. Yeah. Other than, you know, I, I would like to be here in person if there's some way we can, you know, work around that. Yeah. Especially yeah. since it is a difficult year and. A lot of people have a lot of ideas, and I think we need to be on the same page for a lot of things. I also just need to tell you all that Minnesota is starting up again, February 6th. How so long that are means, you gone for? That means, that means I'm gone every other week for the next two months. Could you send us an email with your dates? Yes, I can. Well, we're, um, I'm only booked out for February right now, so I can't tell you March yet. We haven't bought our ticket for March yet. Any information is helpful. Thank you. All right. Mm -hmm. All right. Because that becomes also a quorum issue. Mm -hmm. right. I know Gabriel I know. is busy, quite busy doing things right now. Mm -hmm. So I'm not sure if he'll, we might have to change our meeting dates to, um, to fit your schedule if he's not going to be able to come. Usually I go out on a, either a Wednesday night or a Thursday morning and I come back, you know, um, usually on like a Monday or Tuesday. So, um, uh, so once you figure out your dates, yeah. we can plan our, okay. our mm -hmm. dates. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, actually, I'm, I have February already figured out. I can tell you that right now. Do I need to email you, David, or are you going to automatically just put in us, us for uh, the... Um I'll post you for the 7th. Thank you. And that's at 7th? Seven? 7 o'clock. Thank you. So I would not be able to come on the 15th, but I would be able to come on the 22nd. Okay. Um, and then Mark, let's see. Uh, and then I think 
March 1st. I'd go out again on March 1st, but I would be able to be here on March 8th. So, and then I wouldn't be able to be here on the 15th, I think. Well, we haven't bought these tickets yet, but um, I would be able uh, to be here on the 22nd. This is what I think. Tentatively. The problem is, is that um, since we haven't bought these tickets yet, sometimes this can change a little bit. <coughs> yeah. You yeah. know, something like it goes on and we need to just switch it up a little bit. But mm -hmm. um, that's, so far, that's what I think it is for March. So February's not already set. But so we March could switch March. our meeting sales dates. Yeah. I yeah. wouldn't make the 22nd. That is the one date I would make. Okay. Um, do you want to do it? Well, 21st, that is the... Um, is the uh, election meeting then? Could you come on Wednesday? Yes. Could we do that? Mm -hmm. Okay. We know David at the select board's meeting on the 21st? 21st of February? Yeah. Yes, they are. Uh, no. Oh, February we're talking about? Yeah. Or March? Um, oh, we're not doing that anyway. Oh, I'm in March. Right. Um, so, oh, you're saying that you can't be here on the 22nd of March? Of February. Oh, of February. I'm well, sorry, I thought we were in February. Um, we, we probably were, and I'm I probably, So I, I'm going to be away on the 15th, but I will be here on the 22nd, but you can't be. How about the 21st of February? Select board's meeting. Select board's meeting, okay. Do you want to come, um, so do they meet at 6 or 7? Seven? 7. 7, so you want to come up at 6? Do we want to have a, a brief one hour on the 21st? Would that work? Is that the third Wednesday of the month? Yes? No? It's the, uh, yeah, it's the third. Or there's also Tuesday the 20th. Anybody? I can do Tuesday the 20th. Okay, now. Because I got Is that working? Tuesday the 20th? Mm -hmm. Is that what we said? Okay. All right, awesome. And you do two? Uh, at six. At six. David, does that work for you? Yes. So what are we doing with the 15th? We're not doing the 15th then? That's when I'm going to be away. She's going to be away. Are you going to be here on the 14th? Uh, let's see, the 14th, let's see, the 15th, Val goes to Minnesota. That means on the 14th, Val is here. Right. <laughs> what do you do with that? So, <laughs> and, and the reason why I ask is because the, uh, the warrant will be, uh, uh, the first draft of the warrant will be made available at that time. Okay. okay. So the so 14th will do. Yeah, so we can go through the articles. Okay. Okay, and what time is that going to be? Seven o'clock. Seven. Okay. So some is, is that, that with finance? the select board? Is that is that just select board and us, or just us? But that's uh, right now. That's just select board. Uh, but it, you know, it's an open meeting. So oh, so select and finance committee. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Okay. All right. So let's just to be clear. Um, so we're doing the fourteenth, which is the. And then we're doing the 20th. The 20th. And the, the 20th, okay. And then we're not doing the 22nd, okay. We are, we are doing the 7th. So the 7th, and that starts at what time? Yeah. 6? 7. 7. Oh, that's a 7, okay. 7 p.m. The 14th would be at 7 then. That's select yeah. board and finance. 7. Nothing on the 15th. Double check these things. Oh, the seventh is the first Wednesday of the month. Okay. I'll do my best. Oh, it will get your book if you if you can't make it. Yeah, all all the February meetings are at seven for the select board. Okay. The select board's meeting the seventh, the fourteenth. And the twenty first. And the twenty first. Yeah. Okay. So how do I get back to it? Okay, seven. Yes. Yes, and the twenty and the and the twenty what? Twenty first they're meeting, but you're That's not. Like That's okay, twenty and but we're not. We don't need to be to that one, but we do because we've got ours at on the twentieth. On the twentieth. Do we should we be at the twenty first? I mean, well, that I, I don't know. Okay. At this time, All right. we don't have an one. agenda for that meeting. Okay. All right. So yeah. the the seventh, the fourteenth. And the 20th. Can mm -hmm. I tell you those dates now and you just post them? I've got them right here. Great. So okay. 
Yeah. And I don't so. have to worry about being late and missing. <laughs> I'll send you away. Thank you. <laughs> Times goes by really quick, and then I'm like, oh, oh yeah. man, I oh, forgot. Yes. <laughs> forgot sure to does. send out an email. It sure does. <laughs> Not the first time it's happened, not the last time it'll happen. Yeah. And Valerie, um, is, 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 if we're having a small meeting, does this work okay, or do you want us to try to move it downstairs? This looks fine if I can, yeah. This, okay, this work fine. See it is better in a small room. Somehow the sound oh, okay. you know, is contained better. I'll, I'll clear out my office for next time. It's the best right now because of the budget. Oh. So, <laughs> looks like an explosion in the octopus sector. Oh, indeed. Okay, so I uh, motion to adjourn. Second that. I voted. Okay. 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 Bye. Bye. Thank you, everyone. Bye. Thank you all.